fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests. The great British Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli said as he prepared his final speech for Parliament, I will not go down in history speaking bad grammar. Grammar, my friends, is what allows us to understand each other. I'll give you three examples today of ways in which we can confuse our hearers just by scrambling our grammar a little. Suppose I'm driving along Madison Avenue. Suppose I am driving. But suppose <laughs> I'm driving along Madison Avenue, approaching the wonderful bargain apartment I'm about to look at. And my cat, who is of course sitting in the front seat with me, starts to jump up and down. <coughs> Very excited about the viewing of the apartment. Of course. <coughs> I can say, approaching the apartment, I noticed that my cat jumped up and down. Or I can say, excited by the apartment, my cat began to jump up and down. Or I can say, there's another thing I can say, which it might be, um, which might be uh, signaling for a right turn. My cat started jumping up and down. Now, if I say, driving along, I noticed my cat was jumping up and down, that's fine. Because that group of words at the beginning, that opening phrase, driving along, demands that the next word be the same person or thing acting, the same subject. So, while I was driving along, I noticed driving along, I noticed my cat jumping up and down. But, if I say signaling for a right turn, my cat started jumping up and down, I've scrambled it up because my cat is very shrewd, but does not make turn signals. <laughs> so, signaling for a right turn, my cat started jumping up and down, is very ungrammatical and very confusing, even to a cat lover. <laughs> Second instance, who and whom, a really troublesome issue nowadays. John loves Mary is different from Mary loves John, as we all know, some of us to our regret. John <laughs> loves Mary is different from Mary loves John. The position in the sentence indicates who is doing the loving and who is being loved. So the subject, John loves Mary, is the object. Who and whom is simply a substitute for a word, a noun, in one of those positions. So, who loves whom? That's how it goes. The subject who, the object who. No problem. Problem comes because instead of having just one word, who loves whom, we can have who loves and then go through the same thing again. Who loves, who loves whom. Who loves and then a subject for an object again. So we can say, tell this story to, or we can have a prepositional phrase and say, tell this story to, and then we can say, subject, verb, object, whoever wants to hear it. Whoever is the subject, sorry folks, whoever is the subject there. So nowadays, Many people get confused. I hate to see people being confused, but it happens. People will say, I went to the party with whoever wanted to go. That would be correct. I went to the party with whomever wanted to go. Not correct, because we would never say whomever wanted to go. So the trick is simply, it's not a big trick, everyone can perform it. Most people can perform it by the time they're six. The trick is to keep track of the difference between John loves Mary and Mary loves John. Keep track of what's the subject, what's the object. You do that, you have who and whom under complete control. 
Now we come to the pernicious effects of political correctness. There are many pernicious effects, but I will speak only to the grammatical pernicious effects of political correctness in one connection. Take, for example, the fact that solitary confinement requires the heads of one person, right? Just one person. That is what is the definition of solitary confinement. So many people, however, nowadays, are so correct that they will say, when someone is in solitary confinement, you know what they're going to say, right? You know what the next word is. They, they are unhappy. They are lonely. Folks, the thing about solitary confinement <laughs> is there is no they there. But when someone is in solitary confinement, he or she is unhappy. You said he. <laughs> So you can also make it plural. When people are in solitary confinement, they are unhappy. That gets you out of the problem. But when someone is in solitary confinement, one person, he, he or she, is lonely and unhappy. Montesquieu said, the great essayist Montesquieu said, all human problems are basically problems of grammar. Mr. Toastmaster. 